Number four, a study of the rate of dimerization of C4H6 gave the data shown in the table, which is this beautiful data table right here, and they give us a balanced equation, 2C4H6, which will yield C8H12. Now for letter C, it says, determine the average rate of formation of C8H12 at 1600 seconds and the instantaneous rate of formation of the C8H12 at 3200 seconds from the rates found in part A and B. Now, we already found out, obviously, the rates in part A and B of this question. So if you do need a recap as to why these numbers are the way that they are, you could always go back and check those videos out. Now, we found in part A that the average rate of disappearance of the C486 at the 1600 seconds is 3.1 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity per second. And the instantaneous rate of disappearance of the C486 at 3200 seconds is roughly around 8.4 times 10 to the negative second, seventh molarity per second. From this information, we need to find now the average rate of formation of C8H12. Now, in essence, what we're doing is we're going from a rate of C4H6 because that's what we found out here, right? At the 1600 seconds, we found out a rate of C486. So maybe what I'll do is I'll say, okay, we, we had a rate of C486. And now all that we're doing is we're just converting into a new rate, right? We want to find the, the rate of formation of the C8H12. Now, don't get too caught up on rate of formation, rate of disappearance. Just know that a rate is a rate, is a rate, is a rate, right? Uh, rate of formation, this is just basically saying that, okay, the C8H12 is forming. It's on the product side, right? You form the product. Disappearance just means that this is going bye-bye, right? Bye-bye. It's on the left side. It's a reactant. So, of course, the C486 should be disappearing and the C8H12 should be appearing or being formed, but the speed or the rate in which this is dropping and this is increasing, we can find it out through um, a very, I would say, easy way. Um, and we've learned it in the beginning of chem, right? Whenever we went from one compound to another, right, what did we have to do? Remember when it was moles to moles? It was moles of one compound to moles of another compound. Do you remember what we had to do? Yeah, we had to use the mole ratios. And the mole ratios are just the coefficients. The big numbers in the front. It's that easy, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. And I'm just going to put the balanced equation up top here. So we have 2 C4 H6, which will yield C12, or actually C8 H12. Now always start with what you're given. Let's do the average rate of formation at the 1600. So we want the rate of the C8 H12 at the uh, 1600 second mark. Okay, well, we're just converting from one rate to another rate, and that's just using your mole ratios. So in this case, we take our, um, we take our rate of disappearance of C486, which was a 3.1 times 10 to the negative sixth, right? And if you want, you can use your, your units, right? Molarity per second. And this is specifically of the C4 H6. Use your mole ratios, right? Times by a ratio. You don't want C4 H6 anymore. You want the other one. You want C8 H8 uh, H12. <laughs> Can I see today? I don't know. But always use those big numbers, the coefficients. Just use those mole ratios, right? Look at the coefficients on the balanced equation. You have two C486s for every one C8H12. So where your C486 is, I'm just going to put a two here. 
And for the C8H12, I'm just going to put a 1 here. And the C4H6 will cancel out with the C4H6, and you're left with molarity per second, that's still a rate, of the C8H12. And now you have the right units. Now the reason why we can do this is because inside a molarity is the unit mole. That's why we can use the mole ratio, because moles are hidden in the molarity, so it's fair game. If it's fair game, I'm doing it. So all we have to do is just take this value and divide by 2. 3.1 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 2. And there it is, 1.55 times 10 to the negative 6, and this is the molarity per second of the C8H12. So this is the first answer. This is the rate of formation of the C8H12 at the 1600. Now we just have to do the same thing for the instantaneous one, but it's the same exact idea. So maybe what I'll do, maybe we can move this over here. I think we got it, right? So let's do the rate of C8H12 at the 3200. It does not matter if it's an instantaneous or an average if you're doing the mole ratios because the, the, the going about, you know, doing it is the same way. You're just doing the mole ratio, right? So we're starting off with now what C486's rate was at 3,200 seconds, which was 8.4 times 10 to the negative seventh. Molarity per second of the C4H6. Well, we don't want that rate. I can go from one rate to another rate by just using my mole ratio. C486 goes on the bottom. And the C... what is it? C8. H12 goes up on top. Same units, right? Mole ratio. Two for every one. The compound cancels out. And now you have molarity per second of the... C8H12. So 8.4 times 10 to the negative 7 divided by 2. And there you go. 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7th molarity per second of the C8H12. And that's the second answer. And then I'm just going to be, I'm just going to make it a little bit more apparent that we're just going to color. Coloring is fun. Stress relief. Anyway, um, so this value was at the 1600 seconds, the average rate, and then this one is at the 3200. This is the instantaneous rate for the C8H12, and we're done. That's it. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for being part of the community. I love uh, talking to you guys in the comments. I try to get back to you as much as I can throughout my spare time. Um, check the links in the description. We got goodies for you. Um, you know, and we, we update them when, you know, new stuff comes. You know, my brother and I were really working hard to, you know, make this channel and make this community the best educational community that, that's possible. So thank you so much for all your support throughout this whole journey. And I hope you're doing well out there. Keep studying hard, always keep learning, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.